I hate that shit hard. This is dabbing, a more potent and increasingly popular way of using high THC pot. Just a hit is 10 times stronger than a joint or higher. So popular, it's hard to keep up with the nicknames. Honey, honeycomb, shatter, butter. The dab is the gooey or hard substance placed in the glass, then lit with a butane torch. If you want to know more about this, just ask your kids. This Denver East high schooler asked that his face not be shown, so you'll hear just his voice. Next to him is his mom. Just one of many voices to follow that make up the culture of today's pot. People what like dabs, people like, yeah. it's just like whatever's easier to get. Yeah. You know, uh, kids with higher incomes tend to have the fancy glass pieces and whatnot, mm -hmm. so they tend to dab a lot. But, and you know, lower income kids buy their blunt wraps and stuff like that, so. Do you know what you're getting every time you eat what, whatever you get? Um, I know I'm getting some dank ass weed. They are indeed getting high potency weed. This is a map of how many shops are in the Denver area alone, a few years after Colorado's Amendment 64 passed to allow recreational pot. It's everywhere, in every form imaginable, including flowers and buds, natural and genetically modified strains, ultra-potent liquids and waxes, and pot-infused candies, cookies, drinks, and foods. That's the dangerous mystery for parents, hospitals, addiction counselors, and the Denver District Attorney's Office, the office that prosecutes all criminal cases in Denver. Meet Tim Twining, Senior Chief Deputy District Attorney, Juvenile and Drug Courts. I mean, with these kids, do they know what they're smoking or doing? Well, that's a great question. Uh, yeah. it, it's hard to know, right? Twining has prosecuted some of the biggest crime cases in Colorado. Now his focus is juveniles, drugs, and the gang unit. He says the crime increase surrounding the influx of pot is off the charts. First of all, there is so much illegal marijuana in the city um, and how that has grown and how that's marketed, it's anybody's guess, right? So what they're getting with that stuff, they have no idea. We see it all the time. I uh, handled a case earlier this year um, at a Denver public school where a friend sold $5 worth of marijuana to a girl and to her friend, and they both consumed it. And within 90 minutes, the girl was rushed to the hospital having a seizure, and the boy who also consumed it, who was experienced with marijuana, or so he said, he too had to go to the hospital. So at the end of the day, neither one of them really knew what they were consuming. They thought they were buying it from a friend so it would be safe. As it turns out, she was literally laying on the classroom floor having a seizure. This isn't your grandfather's marijuana anymore. A 15-year-old boy is dead and a 14-year-old may be paralyzed after apparently trying to steal marijuana plants from a Denver backyard. Just last week, we had a man growing in his backyard and shot the juveniles who tried to steal it and killed one of them. There's kind of a general lack of information by the uh, the public, and maybe even some apathy. Oh, it's just marijuana. But we're seeing armed robberies, shootings, like I described, and use just going off the charts. In spring of 2017, a politically powerful group of doctors who advocate just for children, the American Academy of Pediatrics, released a statement against marijuana use by kids up to the age of 25. The report makes two strong points. One, today's marijuana is much more potent and potentially risky. Two, the 40% of kids that have used across our country are setting themselves up for changes in the brain that are permanent. Dr. Christian Thurston of Denver knows this all too well. He's authored research and even a book on the topic of addiction and the teen brain. On average, Dr. Thurston and his staff of eight counselors treat 300 kids a week just for marijuana addiction, 300 kids. The peak ages of marijuana use really are age 16 to 20, and then it really drops off after that. And it's very unfortunate that that's the case because it's adolescents and children who suffer disproportionately when their brains are exposed to the substance. It's not just Colorado. 
As of 2017, pot addiction is the top reason kids and teens in the United States are admitted for substance abuse. Recent research just in the last decade on the adolescent brain sounded an alarm for scientists and doctors. While they knew the brain reached full size and weight at around age six, researchers didn't know that serious construction of brain pathways kick into gear in adolescence. Many parents like to think of alcohol and pot as soft drugs. The adolescent brain doesn't. The intensity of the high is the same or stronger than an adult's. This is the brain reward circuit right here. Like so pleasure center? Every, the pleasure center. Uh -huh. So food, sex, drugs, they all work through this part of the brain right here. So whether it's nicotine, alcohol, marijuana, mm -hmm. heroin, they all work through this part of the brain right here. Thurston runs one of the biggest youth substance treatment centers in Colorado. The hundreds of kids he sees call him Dr. T. And in the short time we visited with him, kids were knocking on his door waiting for their afternoon sessions. Here he shows a map of the developing brain and why parents should look at the pink dots to understand why pot is so addictive for kids, teens, and young adults. An important thing about this is that we know that these pink dots, the CB1 receptor, it's called, help control brain development. So the density of these pink dots peaks in childhood and then goes down thereafter. Tons of these receptors in an area of the brain called the hippocampus, which is really important for learning and memory. This is a structure that's damaged with adolescent exposure to marijuana, at least in animal studies. Lots of these receptors in the prefrontal cortex, which is really important for judgment, organization, thinking ahead. Even today's legal and commercially sold pot has no limits on THC potency. At the other end of the spectrum are low to zero THC marijuana oils used by kids for seizures and adults for pain. These products are now federally regulated. It is critical for parents to understand the THC levels of every product available to teenagers. Adolescence is a natural time of impulse and experimentation. If today's high-potency pot becomes part of their lives, the effects are unpredictable and, at times, dangerous. Very potent marijuana can cause psychotic reactions, so a break with reality, feeling very paranoid. Uh, also, pure THC, so very potent marijuana, can cause a lot of anxiety, so we see people presenting with anxiety, severe anxiety attacks as well. While Amendment 64 addressed recreational pot for those 21 and older, it's kids, the new pot, and potency that has Colorado's governor concerned. When you're a teenager, your brain is growing very, very rapidly. The high THC marijuana we have uh, is so intense in the way it affects your synapses and, and the, those parts of your brain that literally every brain scientist I've talked to feels there's a very high probability that even if you only smoke once a week, this high THC marijuana, if you're a teenager, it will take a sliver of your long-term memory forever. His concern echoes throughout the community of psychiatry and addiction counseling in Colorado. Addiction counselors question an adult law that clearly continues to affect the younger generation with access all over the state, especially the new ways to consume potent pot, the edibles. Are you concerned about the fact that you one edible may have 13% THC, oh, yeah. but another yeah. thing may be up to... I am totally concerned about that because it becomes in the chemical uh, structure of the THC. It doesn't melt down, and so while it gets distributed to an edible, it's totally unpredictable. You don't know how much THC it's going to be contained in a piece of candy. Psychotherapist Francesca Finks treats addicts in group and single sessions. Overall, 95% of referrals aren't for heroin or even alcohol. 95% are marijuana related. You probably are exposing a young adult uh, to the risk of losing the essence of adolescence. Back to this high schooler. He says most underage kids buy from street dealers. What non-smokers and a lot of parents don't get, he says, it's that it's not just smoking weed. It's an entire culture. Kids like to be legal when they're old enough, but of course they're gonna get into it beforehand because 
you know you are. it's not treated like it like it is it's treated as a medicine but it's also treated as a subculture and that's what people need to understand yeah. This culture, in research outlined in Dr. Christian Thurston's book, Clearing the Haze, indicates that very much like big tobacco, getting kids hooked early is a gold mine for the business of pot. Marijuana predicts up to an eight point drop in IQ if it's heavy exposure beginning in adolescence going into adulthood. Uh, we also know that exposure to marijuana during adolescence predicts a two to fourfold increase rate of schizophrenia and psychosis, which is basically a break with reality, hearing things that aren't there, seeing things that aren't there um, in adulthood. This mom's kids went to Cherry Creek High School. She was focused on starting a nonprofit to help kids get internships and jobs. That's when she started talking and listening to kids about their peers' challenges. When she asked what the number one obstacle to kids succeeding their answer, pot. And they were telling me that, you know, they were worried about their friends, friends that they used to be really close to, that suddenly didn't care about anything, that were uninvolved, friends that were dropping out of school, siblings. They were telling me about uncles and aunts, about their parents, and that they felt like nobody was talking about it. So Carlson's focus changed. She co-founded Smart Colorado, which began as a platform for Colorado's kids to have a voice in pot policy. Smart Colorado's sole goal, and the only reason we formed, was to protect kids as marijuana uh, became legalized. And uh, we formed after protecting kids and public health and safety ranked last in the uh, priorities of the policy-making body. Smart Colorado's policy is put kids first. Their work, supported by all four of Colorado's living ex-governors, is to get basic safeguards for kids into law. This includes public disclosure and education around potency, products, and intake methods, and requiring truth in labeling, warnings, and product claims. This mom, who's been familiar with pot from the 1980s low-potency plants and buds, says today's products are so potent and so confusing. I'm a little concerned about it because it's so there's so much out there. Nobody knows the power or potency of it, and I do think it has an impact on younger kids at the potency. Like when I was younger, it was like swag, you know, is all you could get. I would appreciate labeling about the potency for everyone. But yeah, I mean, if kids are getting into it, I mean, if we have this level of intelligence about marijuana at this point in our culture, where we, where we have the ability to do that, why can't we do that overall and continue, continue being thoughtful about it, because I feel like kids are smart. They're smart enough to, to want to know those things as well. So parents and all adults who care about kids have to be smart. They have to have the conversation. A good starting point, science is on your side. The new research shows definitive conclusions on how your child's brain is affected by THC. The doctors who care for your children across our country that make up the American Academy of Pediatrics say any use of pot is just too risky with a developing brain. There are answers out there, so ask the hard questions for all of our kids. We end with one final voice, Colorado mom Aubrey Adams, who posted this video on YouTube in 2017. With signs and silent pain, she tells her story.
And there's a fear on the line I make it roll on in my mind On fair to Something new I would hurt and hurt 